Newton will hold the 37. The big play of the game for the Dolphins. Waiting for the snap. Here's the snap, step down, the kick is up. He's got the distance. It's good! The Dolphins win! The Dolphins win! Caprivian, 37 yards, and the Dolphins are in the AFC Championship game as the little guy boots one in from 37 yards out. And the Dolphins... In 1971, something beautiful happened in Miami. This sun-vast, gilt-edged town was swept off its feet by a football team. All of the Miamians fell in love with a dynamic young Dolphins. This proud, talented organization had rocketed to success in only six short years. It was 1966 when owner Joe Robbie and personnel director Joe Thomas began the painstaking task of trying to mold the fledgling Dolphins into a winning football team. There were a few glorious moments in the early years, but for the most part, the new kids on the block took their lumps from the older established ruffians in the league. In each of the Dolphins' first four years, they finished the season with a negative one lost record. Then Don Shula took the helm, and in a dramatic reversal of form, the Dolphins finished the 70 season with a mark of 10 and four. Despite their accomplishments, the critics were skeptical about Miami's chances to repeat that fine season, but there were 40 men wearing aqua orange and white who believed in themselves as a team, and they set out to make believers of the critics. Our story really begins in the mile-high city of Denver on the opening day of the NFL season. The Dolphins were here to take on the defensively brutal Broncos. Garo Yapremian got Miami off on the right foot, or is it the left foot, with his first quarter field goal. From the Bronco 22-yard line, waiting for the snap from center. Here it is, set down, the kick is up, it's good. Coach Shula had characterized his team's play during the just-completed exhibition season as inconsistent. Now, here in game one, the only thing the Dolphins did consistently was fumble. Four times, to be exact, and in the fourth quarter, Miami trailed the Broncos 10-3. The Premier, after clicking on his first field goal, had missed three in a row. With only three minutes to play in the game, Miami went with the only combination it had working well, Greasy to Warfield. Denver then decided to accept the tie score as final and elected to kill the clock with time-consuming ground plays. The disappointed Dolphins had no way of knowing how important that tie would be in determining the Eastern Division Championship. In Buffalo the following week, Garo Yapremian's talented toe recuperated from the malaise it suffered seven days earlier he kicked four consecutive field goals in the first 30 minutes to give Miami a 12 to 7 halftime lead. Waiting for the snap. Here it is, set down. The kick is up. And it's perfect. The Premier breaks the ice. Waiting for the snap. Here it is, set down. The kick is up. He has the distance. It is good. Kill your Premier with a vengeance. Salt's the second one of the ball game through there, a 46-yarder. Noonan will hold. And it'll be about the 13-yard attempt, waiting for the snap. Here it is, set down, the kick is up. And it's perfect. The Premier will try for his fourth field goal. The ball is marked in the near side inbound hash mark, a nine-yard attempt. As Noonan will hold, Arrow is three for three. In this ball game with 29 seconds left to play in the first half. Here's the snap, set down, he kicked it. It's good. The Premier, the big gun this afternoon with his fourth field goal. The short Cypriot tiemaker later kicked his fifth field goal of the game, setting a Dolphin record. So Garo Yapremian comes in to try to make it five for five in the field goal kicking department. The ball is marked from the near side inbound hash mark. He's kicking toward the west end zone. It'll be a 48 yard attempt. Here's the snap, set down, the kick is up. He's got the distance. It is good! Carol, you come in five for five, a 48-yard field goal, a 75-yard drive, and seven plays. And the little guy from Cyprus has been fantastic this afternoon. The explosive combo of Bob Greasy and Paul Warfield struck for a 23-yard score. But it was Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid who really bushwhacked the Bills. Fully foot to the right. Warfield to the near side. Greasy hands the ball to Zonka. Sweep to the right. Gets the corner turn. 30, 35. Running over people at the 40-yard line and knocked out of bounds on the far side of the field. At about the 40, 
in Dolphin territory. 15-yard pickup, a first down for Miami. Warfield spread to the left, fully to the near side. Greasy hands to Zonka, pulls his way across the left side. Inside the 25, still digging, carrying tacklers with him. Inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. Here's a handoff to kick. Sprints out to the right. Turns the corner down to the 15, down to the 10, down to the 5, down to the 3-yard line goes Jim Kick. Greasy. Hands off, kick, draw play, through the left side, 40. He's across the 40-yard line up to the 44 before he's knocked off his feet by Goodry, number 59. Zonka blasted for 103 yards while playing with a bleeding broken nose, and his sidekick, Jim Kick, gained 108. On October 3rd, the Dolphins came home to the Orange Bowl to host the New York Jets. They were supposed to play a football game, but it looked more like a rehearsal for a Max Senate slapstick comedy. 59 slips were recorded during the game as players slid, flipped, and tumbled on the banana peel polyturf carpet. Complete to Harkey, and he gets only a couple of yards up to about the 36-yard line before he's knocked off his feet. He's cut back to the right and slipped and fell. We've had a lot of slipping and falling on the polyturf this afternoon. Warfield splits left, stowed to the near side, kicking Zonka behind Greasy, back to throw on second down is Bob. Swings one out to Zonka on the far side, slips, gets up at the 15, gets back out to the 20-yard line. Morris sets as a slot man to the left side. Warfield split left, stow to the right. Here's Greasy back to throw on second and nine. Slips and falls down, gets up. He sprints out to his right now. Still looking for an open man upfield. It is caught by Warfield. Knocked out at the 40-yard line. He is hit and holds onto the ball. There's the play of the game. Here's the handoff to Mercury. Falls down, picks the ball up, and is horse collared at the 38 for a loss of about three. This is like uh, a hockey game. Only the ice skaters can stand up better. When the game was over, the scoreboard read New York 14, Miami 10. For the Dolphins, the comedy was really a tragedy. Three games into the season, and they were floundering along with a 1-1-1 one, one, and one record. It was now or not this year for Miami. The following Sunday, they put it all together against the Cincinnati Bengals. Greasy throws the bomb. Warfield has got it down to the 10 to 5. He's in for the score. Third and goal from the four-yard line. Greasy. Looks to throw, sets up, fires the end zone, caught, touchdown, Dolphins, Howard Trilley. Howard Trilley makes the grab, and he is elated, and so are the Dolphins, and we move now to a 16-3 lead. It will be a fourth down situation, and uh, the field goal unit comes in. Darryl Yopremian to try, and Carl Noonan will hold. It will be approximately a 36-yard attempt, waiting for the snap. Here it is, set down, the kick is up, he has the distance. It is perfect. The Bengals were run over 23 to 13, thus becoming the first victim of Miami's eight-game winning streak. Next came the Patriots, and the Dolphins attacked both offensively and defensively. The swarming Dolphin defense dumped Jim Plunkett seven times, and when the defense gave the offensive bunch the ball, they knew what to do with it. Bob Greasy, having a perfect day, fired four touchdown passes, three of them coming the first three times Miami took possession. That's two in a row. Now it was revenge time against the Jets. With a lot of help from all pro guard Larry Little, Butch and Sundance zonked and kicked the Jets into submission. Second down and six Dolphins from their 49. The handoff to Zonka, sweep to the right, 50, 45. Puts his head down and rams his way over tacklers inside the 40 in Jet territory. Chuck Hinnon is the fellow who brought him down finally. And the block thrown by Larry Little, Norm Evans, helped to clear the pass for Larry Zonka. The Dolphins pick up a first down, and the ball is at the 39-yard uh, line in Jets territory. On the snap, here's a handoff to kick, finds a hole. He's got a big one across the 25, down to the 20-yard line. Greasy up under center. Here's the handoff going to Zonka, sweeps the right side. He's running room. He's picking up yardage to the 20, down to the 15, on the far sidelines, and gets down to about the 10-yard line. Larry Little threw a tremendous block over there to swing him loose. Zonka and Kick combined for 258 yards rushing. Larry had 137, Jim had 121, and the Dolphins had the Jets 30 to 14. For their fourth straight victim, the Dolphins took on the deadly Rams of Los Angeles. The Rams defense shut off Kick and Zonka, so Bob Greasy took up the slack. Here's the snap to a Greasy. Flags go down. He has plenty of time now. He decides to sprint left. He throws up the middle. Warfield's got it. 50, 45. He might go the distance. 30, 25, 20, 15 to the 10. Five touchdowns. Dolphins, but we have a flag. 
the penalty against the Rams, and the Dolphins draw first blood with a 74-yard touchdown pass from Bob Greasy to Paul Warfield. Greasy up under center, barks the signals, waits for the snap. Here it is, he drops back the throw, gets good protection, throws in the end zone, it is caught, the 20 touchdown. The Miami defense was outstanding, especially Nick Bonacati. It was Nick who made the key stop of the game in this fourth down situation late in the final quarter. There's the big play of the ball game. Right here, fourth and three at the Dolphins' 32-yard line. Gabriel sets his ball club, waiting for the snap from center. Here it is, he hands to Ellison. Ellison jammed up the line of scrimmage, bounces off tacklers, and he didn't make it. He stopped at the 32-yard line. Nick Bonacati jammed the play up. Hines is in on it, everybody. He was smothered by Aqua Jerseys at the 31-yard line. The next Sunday, Buffalo's winless Bills had high hopes of stopping the Miami win streak at four. Their optimism was given a boost when they saw Jim kick on the sidelines and civvies nursing a bruised knee. But the land lovers from upstate New York had no way of knowing that the Dolphins contained a deadly dose of mercury. From the Bills' 14-yard line, first down Miami. Doing some stunning on the Bills. The handoff goes to Morris. Sweep to the right. The 15 to the 10. Down to the 5. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 3-yard line. Zonka and Morris in behind Bob Greasy. Long count at the line of scrimmage this time. Here's the snap. Hand off to Mercury. Through the right side. Cuts outside. He's at the 10. The 15 runs in right into a tackle. And is knocked off a seat at the 19-yard line. But he gets the first down. Here's the pitch to Mercury, sweep to the right behind Evans, he gets the block, turns the corner, 30, 25, 20, cuts back to his left, he's got a score at the foul, touchdown, Dolphins. Eugene Mercury Morris, playing in the spot usually occupied by kick, slithered through the Buffalo defense for 116 yards. The Dolphins' solid, underrated defense played brilliantly, smothering the Bills' attack and recording the first shutout in Miami history. Defensive coach Bill Arnsparger was awarded the game ball for masterminding the Dolphins' defensive strategy in the 34-0 win. The convincing win over Buffalo was followed by a thrilling come-from-behind victory over Pittsburgh a week later. With Bob Greasy on the sidelines, pale-skinned and weakened from a stomach disorder, which necessitated an overnight hospital stay, George Myra guided the Dolphins to this field goal attempt. Newton will hold. They'll set it down at the 43 be a 43-yard attempt. Garrow on the season has 19 for 27, his longest 48 yards. He is the NFL's leading scorer with 77 points. Snap set down, the kick is up, he's got the distance. It is perfect. And the Dolphins take the lead. Then Terry Bradshaw hit on three TD passes, and the Dolphins trail 21 to three. Coach Shula turned to Greasy on the bench, asked if he felt ready to play. Bob answered yes, and went on to prove it. Greasy dropping back to throw, looking, looking, throws in the middle. Warfield got a touchdown. Down. There's Greasy back to throw. Now he's going to have to scramble with a football. Still behind the line of scrimmage, throwing deep to Warfield. He's wide open. He's got it. 25, got a 25, 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Down. Greasy with a long count at the line of scrimmage, fakes the handoff. Sprints back to his left, sets up, going deep for Waterfield. He's in the open. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. On November 21st, Miami was the winningest team in pro football with a 7-1-1 record and riding the crest of a six-game winning streak. Today's contest against the world champion Baltimore Colts was more than just a game. It was mortal combat and featured the introduction of the Dolphin battle flag, the white handkerchief. The teams were fighting for first place, and Miami led by a thin half game. But more than that, these two were deadly rivals. In this encounter, Baltimore struck first on a John Unitas TD pass and led at halftime 7-0. Then in the second half, Miami's fine offensive line began to blow open the holes. Greasy, up under center, barks the signals with 12.45 to go in the third quarter. Here's the handoff to kick through, home the right side, 30, down to the 25, cuts back to his left, inside the 20, down to the 15-yard line. Greasy up under center, barks the signals. Long count at the line of scrimmage. Here's the handoff. Zonka through the middle, inside the 10, down to the six-yard line. They open up a hole, huge hole that time, and the Colts defense was really trapped. Second and goal from the nine-yard line. Here is Greasy dropping back to throw, sets throws, it is incomplete. Warfield flagged down, interference. 
Interference in the end zone against the Colts. Rick Volk and the Dolphins will have a first down and goal from the one-yard line. Waiting for the snap from center. Here it is. Hand off the kick. He pounds inside. Touchdown, Dolphins! All right, let's get the white handkerchiefs out. Two people listening on your transistors. And friends, there are about 50,000 white handkerchiefs. Look at them. Oh! Keep waving them, gang. We're in. Following an interception by Doug Swift, the Dolphins scored their second touchdown in less than two minutes. With 8.09 to go in the third quarter, score tied 7 to 7. Twilly right, Warfield left, Kick and Zonka split in behind Greasy. Dolphins moving to the east end zone to our right. Greasy up under center, barks the signals, back he goes to throw, sets up into the end zone. Way up the touchdown, Marv Fleming! And he butts the ball into the ground. There's 60, maybe 70,000 white handkerchiefs. The Colts came back to tie the score at 14-14. Then Garrow the tie maker became Garrow the tie breaker. They put the ball down for 13, and here comes Garrow's field goal team in. This will be about a 20-yard attempt. Noonan will hold. We have seven minutes and five seconds to go. The Dolphins would have loved a touchdown here. Waiting for the snap from the 20-yard line. Here it is, set down, the kick is up, and it is perfect. It is perfect, six minutes, 50 seconds to go. There's a timeout on the field with a score. Dolphins 17 and the Colts 14. Baltimore's last ditch effort to pull the game out was negated by Dick Anderson. All right, uh, Mackey is out, Mitchell is in. This is the big play, third and 10. He's come through on the big one so far. From the Dolphins 35 yard line, hit and splits left. To the near side is Richardson. M Mitchell is a slot man left. Morrow drops back to throw. He has time, sprints out to his right. Let's go to pass. In the end zone, it is intercepted by Dick Anderson. In the end zone for the Dolphins, and we take over. He took it away from Tom Mitchell. And so it came to pass that football fans across the nation finally accepted the Dolphins as an NFL power. That fact was reinforced ever so strongly the following Monday night on national television. Miami treated the millions of onlookers to an awesome display of football talent. They mauled the Big Bad Bears of Chicago 34 to 3. Greasy has the ball club set down here at the West End Zone. Up under center. Here's the handoff. Tonka! Touchdown, Dolphins! Greasy on the snap. Rolls out to his right. Looks to throw. There's a flag down. Sets up. Completes at the one-yard line and carrying in for the touchdown is Marv Fleming, but there's a flag on the play. And it appears to be against the Bears. The touchdown will stand up. Second and ten from the Bears' 49 and a half yard line. Douglas back to throw. Sets up. Hit from behind. Pass is picked off at the 40. Jake Scott, 45, spins up a tackle and is knocked down at the Dolphins' 46-yard line. Bears ball from their 20. Here's Douglas. Fakes the handoff. Drops back to throw. Let's go to the bomb. It is picked off. Jake Scott for the Dolphins. Back on the 40-yard line in Dolphin territory. It was intended for Dick Gordon. That is Scott's seventh pass interception of the season and his second of this ball game. A 10, 5, touchdown, Dolphins. George drops back to throw. Sets up, rifles one. Touchdown, Dolphins. That made it eight straight wins for the Dolphins, and they were looking like they wouldn't get beat again until Miami became a ski resort. Against New England the next week, things started just fine. Waiting for the official's whistle. Here comes Gogolak forward, gets the toe into it. The wind behind it, it's not too deep. Mercury Morris at the five, out to the 10, the 20, the 25, he's in the open. 35, 40 down the near sideline, he's got to go all the way. 35, 30, 25, 20, down to the 10, five, touchdown, Dolphins. 95 yards for the Merch. Then the roof fell in. Charlie Gogolak will get ready to uh, get his toe into it. Here it is. It's high, again, not too deep. Hubert Ginn, the near side, the 10, the 15, the 20. Cuts to the middle, 25. He is really cracked. Fumble at the 26 down. Plus, the New England Patriots have recovered. Here's the kick by Gogolak. It's high and pretty deep this time. 
Back at about the two-yard line is Jim. 5, 10, 15, out to the 20, 25, 30, still going across the 35. And he's knocked down by one of his own men, a fumble, and the Patriots recover again. Dolphins have a first down at the Patriots' 27-yard line. Greasy sets. Hands off. Here is Kick trying to find a hole. Puts his head down. Fumbles the ball. The Patriots recover at their 21. Back to throw. Greasy sets up. Throws down the near side. It's picked off at the 48, 50, 45, 40. Down the near sideline. Farwell, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Patriots. Patriot rookie quarterback Jim Plunkett teamed with ex-Stanford teammate Randy Vataha for two TDs as the Pats pistol whip Miami 34 to 13. The Dolphin gang retreated to lick their wounds and reload their guns when suddenly around the bend came the charging Colts who trailed Miami by only a half a game once again. This time Baltimore stopped the Dolphin power ground attack cold and they did it two ways. First, the monstrous Colt defense took away Kick and Zonka's daylight. Then, when Miami gave up the ball, John Unitas, acting like a spoiled rat, refused to give it back. The old maestro called a brilliant ball control game, and before the Dolphins knew it, the clock ran out, and they were beaten 14 to 3. Now, Miami was in big trouble. They had their backs to the wall. If they wanted to win the division title, they would have to beat the Packers and hope that the Patriots would do to the Colts what they did to the Dolphins two weeks earlier. Miami did its part and left the rest to fate. Star pitches to Brockington, sweep to the right, he's caught behind the line of scrimmage, that is gang tackle for a loss, back at the 17 yard line. Dolphins pursuit, Doug Swift got him first from the strong side linebacker, and Tim Foley came also barreling in there along with Jim Riley. Bart fakes the handoff, drops back to throw, good protection, fires the screen, Brockington's got it at the 15, and Bob Acani will not let him get any point. Stowe is put to the right side. Warfield on the near side. Zonka needs unofficially just three yards now. Here's the handoff. He belts the middle, and that's going to be very close. As he started from the 39, gets to the 42-yard line. Three or four yards is what he needed unofficially to get to the 1,000-yard mark. There it is. Larry Zonka, the officials call a timeout. We had it right on the button. He needed three yards. They're stopping the game, and are going to present Larry with the football. What an achievement this is, and he's coming over to the near sideline. Fans have the handkerchiefs out. He has played with more bumps and bruises than most running backs. In order to attain the 1,000-yard mark, you have to have durability along with ability. And he has had it. He has played with the bumps and the bruises, and he surpasses the 1,000-yard mark in rushing the first golfer to do that and uh, enters a very exclusive club. Snaps it down. It's blocked. Two of the shots and picks it up. 45. Follow the 30, 25, 20, follow 10, 5, touchdown, Dolphins. Curtis Johnson and Lloyd Mumford teamed up to block that kick, and Johnson picked up the loose football and takes it down the far sidelines. 45 yards for a touchdown. The Dolphins' 27-6 romp over Green Bay left them with a final season record of 10 wins, 3 losses, 1 tie. They listened for the final score of the Colts-Patriots game. Then the news came through that Puckett and Bataha had teamed up once again and had beaten the Colts. Miami was number one. On Christmas Day, 1971, the Dolphins were in the playoffs for the second year in a row. Last year as a wild card team, they were bumped off by the Oakland Raiders in the first round. This year, it was their unenviable task to take on the team that eliminated Oakland in regular season divisional play, the Kansas City Chiefs. In the opinion of many experts, the Chiefs had more talent man for man than any other team in football, with the possible exception of the Dallas Cowboys. Before kickoff, the odds makers figured the Chiefs to win, but the dauntless Dolphins never considered themselves underdogs to anybody. Finally, it was kickoff time. As the whistle sounded and the ball was put in play, the longest day in NFL history had begun. The wild, heart-stopping six-quarter contest was on, and the Chiefs scored first. Yard on the season is 26 out of 44, and the field goal department wound up with 110 points, waiting for the snap from center. Here it is, set down. The kick is up. And it's good. Up uh, against the screen down here at the east end of the field. So the Chiefs take the lead. 
The Dolphins got in deep trouble when Willie Lanier intercepted this misdirected Bob Greasy pass. Greasy dropping straight back to throw. Gets a pretty good rush. Rips one in the middle, and it's picked off by Lanier at the 50, 45, down to the 40, and down to the Dolphins 35. Willie Lanier, the middle linebacker, picked it off at about the midfield swipe, or perhaps down a couple of yards beyond that. Returned 15 yards before Larry Little dropped him at the Dolphins 35. Seven plays later, Ed Podolak carried a Len Dawson screen pass seven yards for a touchdown. Stenerud added a point to make the score 10 to nothing. Already the Kansas City fans were howling for the Dolphins' heads. But Greasy gave them something to think about with this pass to Paul Warfield. Dolphins for the first down at our 44-yard line. Greasy on the snap, drops straight back to throw. Buchanan on him. Here's the pass. Warfield fakes the catch at the 35. Puts around a defensive man, 30, down to the 25, gets a block, takes off another tackler, and he's down to the 20-yard line. What a tremendous effort by Paul Warfield. There's the gun. That's the end of the first quarter. Dolphin action continues from Kansas City, Missouri, with a score. The Chiefs 10 and our Dolphins nothing. Greasy then hit Marv Fleming over the middle on a gain to the four. Two plays later from the one-yard line, Larry Zonka played bulldozer. Dolphins trying to get into this end zone. That short yardage power blocking unit still in there. Greasy sets his ball club, waiting for the snap from center. Here it is, hand off to Zonka. He's in for the touchdown. The second quarter was mainly a strong defensive battle, and it was the Dolphins' defense who came up with this Kansas City turnover in the final minute. We would love to get our hands with good field position on that ball again before the clock runs out. Chiefs from their four-yard line. Here's a handoff, total axe through the middle, and he fumbles the ball. Dolphins have got it at the 13-yard line. Dick Anderson is the man who recovered the fumble, and Frank Cornish is the man who put the pressure on him and stripped the ball from him. Anderson recovered the fumble, and the Dolphins have the ball at the Chiefs' 13-yard line. The score was 10-10 at halftime, or should we say third time of this six-quarter game. Miami was hanging tough, but the Chiefs kept jumping ahead. A 15-play drive, which consumed 10 minutes of the third quarter, culminated with Jim Otis's one-yard touchdown plunge. Stenerud's kick made it 17-10. With the end of everything the Dolphins had accomplished in sight, Greasy put on a brilliant aerial display. Greasy on the snap, makes the handoff, goes back to throw. He fires for Twilly, got it at the 45, runs into a tackler, still going across the 50 and back down at the Chiefs' 48-yard line. Warfield splits to the far side, Twilly to the near side, Greasy back to throw, throws the square out to Twilly, got it at 38, and he's run out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Marcellus grabbed him around the head and wrestled him out. First down, kicking Zonka to split back behind Bob Greasy from the Chiefs' 30-yard line. On a second down and four, Greasy drops the throw, fires the middle, Warfield 15 down to the 10. Down to the seven yard line is Paul Warfield. First and goal from the seven yard line. Greasy rolls out to his left, fires a pass for kick. He's got it out of bounds at the one yard line in the far coffin corner. Jim kick. Second down and goal for the Dolphins at the one yard line. Then Butch Cassidy and the Cypriot toe even things up. Out of the huddle they come now. Third and goal. We need this one desperately with a minute and ten to go in this third quarter. Greasy sets his ball club. Waiting for the snap from center. Here's a handoff. And in for the touchdown. In for the touchdown. Jim kick over the left side as he vaulted into the end zone. And it's now a 17 to 16 score. And Yepremian is now in to try the point for placement. The Dolphins came right down and took the momentum back with a minute showing on the clock left to play in the third quarter. Noted will hold. An important extra point coming up here for the little man from Cyprus. Waiting for the snap from center. Here it is, set down. Yepremian toes it up there. It's right through the uprights. And it's a tie ball game. There's a timeout on the field with one minute to go in the third quarter. The score, our Dolphins 17, the Chiefs 17. The Kansas City fans were growing more and more uneasy with each passing minute. They figured that this youthful squad from sunny Florida would have surrendered by now. But they kept coming back. And now with the ball on the Chiefs 15, they were poised to take the lead for the first time. The Chiefs didn't like that idea. 11 minutes, 33 seconds left to go. In this ball game, score tied 17-17. Warfield splits left, fully to the far side. Kick and Zonka the split backs in behind Greasy. From the 15-yard line. Somebody jumps for Kansas City. Greasy back to throw, no flag down. Greasy fires. It is intercepted. 
at the nine yard line by linebacker Jim Lynch. Apparently, the Kansas City man got back in time because there was no flag thrown. That theft reignited the Chiefs' offense. They marched 91 yards in seven plays with Podolak going over from the three to put Kansas City on top once more. There were only six minutes remaining when Miami's aerial circus went to work. Three feet, putting back out towards right to throw. He fires back to the near side, screen to Fleming. 25, 30, 35 to the 40. He has felt it at the 41-yard line. Greasy up under center, calls those signals. Drops to throw. He fires for Warfield. He's got it. Down on 20, 15, down to about the 12-yard line. Warfield. Greasy up under center. Marking those signals, waiting for the snap. He looks to throw. He's going to run with the ball. Now he fires it. It is caught. Touchdown is the call. Meyer Fleming is the man who caught the touchdown pass. As Greasy had to spread out, look for the open man, and then fire the end zone, and Fleming catches it. The Dolphins are right back in it with a minute 36 to go. Yepremian booted the point to tie the score for the third time. Then, with a minute and a half remaining, he kicked off to Ed Podolak. Yepremian will kick off. McVeigh and Podolak are deep. Here is the kick. He gets it high. Back right on the goal line is Podolak out to the five, the 10, the 15, to the 20. The money going to go to the 40. Yepremian makes it. He's at the 50. Down to the 40, the 35. And he's out of bounds. Down on the sideline. At the 22-yard line, that's exactly what we did not need. 78 yards. As the Dolphin coverage, Podolak ran straight ahead, cut to the far sideline. Gary Yopremian had a shot at him, and he just didn't have the speed to get him. And he was run out of bounds on the far side of the field. Oh, what a way to lose the ball game. Curtis Johnson's game-saving tackle prevented Podolak from winning it in one dramatic dash. The Chiefs were still in perfect field goal position. Jan Stenerud stood waiting on the sideline. And as the clock wound down toward its final click, the spotlight belonged to him. It looked like the end of the road for the Dolphins. But now it brings up the field goal situation. The Dolphins call a timeout to use up their final timeout to stop the clock with 35 seconds. And here is Jan Stenerud. Dawson will hold. And the ball is going to be set down. Center Rude wants to put down at the 32-yard line, an additional yard to give him plenty of opportunity. Plenty of room. Waiting for the snap from center. Here it is, set down. The kick is up. It is... No good! No good! He missed it! Off to the right side! Somehow, when the dust had cleared, Miami was still alive. Now the fourth overtime game in pro football history was about to begin. The coin was flipped to determine possession of the ball, and the referee signaled Kansas City. Don Shula's face wore the expression of a man who had just been convicted of horse wrestling without the benefit of a trial. For 22 minutes and 40 seconds of savage overtime play, the Chiefs tried to win it, and Miami denied them. Now, the man who led the NFL in scoring was about to attempt the most important field goal of his life. So your premium and the field goal unit come on. The ball is right directly in the center of the playing field. He got no gain on it. They put it down at the 30-yard line. This will be an approximate 37-yard attempt. If Garrow makes it, the Dolphins win. He missed one earlier from 52 yards. Noonan will hold. 37 yards. There is no angle, but there is a breeze. Let's see. Newton will hold for 37. The big play of the game for the Dolphins. Waiting for the snap. Somebody jumps and the Chiefs gets back. Here's the snap cut down. The kick is up. He's got the distance. It's good! The Dolphins win! The Dolphins win! The Premier 37 yards, and the Dolphins are in the AFC Championship game as the little guy boots one in from 37 yards out, and the Dolphins win the ball game 27 to 24. What a finish. Coach Shula. We'd like to first get your impression of what is, uh, the, I guess, the second longest game in pro football history. Well, I guess it's the longest game in pro football history, but I could care less how long it is. Just the final score, that's the only thing I'm interested in. And it turned out our way, and our guys fought and scratched and came from behind. Then when we had the opportunity to win it, uh, your premium knocked it through there. And 
uh, it's a fitting climax with Garrow winning the ball game because I think he was a little upset that he didn't get named to the Pro Bowl. He led the league in scoring and had a tremendous field goal percentage, and uh, yet he wasn't the guy that was picked. And uh, I just, uh, I'm real happy for Garrow that he uh, knocked it through there and won the ball game. We're going to move right now over to Joe Robbie, the Dolphin owner who has seen them through from the beginning, through the hard times, now up to the good times. Joe, you got to be pretty happy. Well, this is the greatest experience of our lives. It certainly is of mine. It may be also the best football game that was ever played. Lamar Hunt uh, of the Kansas City Chiefs just walked in, congratulated Bob Greasy. Bob, uh, you played a ball game and a half today almost, and uh, it's got to be physically I think exhausting. Most of the guys feel it, too. Uh, it was a very long game, very tiring game, uh, very physical game, and uh, we've been very tired if it was just four quarters, but uh, you know, went into six. And, uh, it's just a great win. We had to come from behind a number of times. We're all very happy. We're just all very tired, too. Gerald, you're premium. I want to thank you very much for uh, coming over and talking to me. You know, you're so busy. I'm very happy. Uh, everybody's happy here. And I just uh, thank all the guys on the team for giving me all the confidence to go out there and kick and gave me all the time. The next day, the Baltimore Colts, this year's wild card entry and still defending champions of the world, beat the Cleveland Browns. That set up take three of the Miami-Baltimore War. In their first meeting, Miami won 17 to 14. In the second encounter, Baltimore was victorious by a score of 14 to three. This one was rated dead even. Miami had home field advantage by virtue of beating the Colts out for the division title. 78,000 faithful fans packed the Orange Bowl to watch their darlings win the American Conference Championship. The Dolphins played perfect football, both offensively and defensively. Their flexible zone defense bent a little, but it never broke. On five of their six first half possessions, the Colts crossed into Miami territory only to come up empty handed. The Dolphins had their Kansas City field goal hex working again, this time on Jim O'Brien. All right, O'Brien will try a field goal. Earl Morrill is in the hole. It'll be from straight out in front, waiting for the snap. Here it is. Morrill sets it down. The kick is up. He has the distance, but he does not have the angle, and Morris feels it as it's wide to the left in the end zone and down to it. And so it'll be a fourth down, and here comes O'Brien again with Morrill to hold. Here's the snap, set down, the kick is up. This one is right underneath the crossbar, no good. Morris grabs it at the goal line after the five, and he is nailed. And so a fourth down, and this time we do get O'Brien in, waiting for the snap. 35-yard attempt by Jim O'Brien. Snap, set down, the kick is blocked. Blocked by Mumford, grabbed in the air by Doug Swift, and the Dolphins have the ball. Swift being wrestled to the far sidelines and out of bounds at about the Dolphins' 32-yard line. Once the coach got as far as the Miami eight-yard line, they found out, however, that the Dolphin defense is a mean, hungry bunch. Nottingham and Matty are the setbacks in the eye. Now here comes Matty in motion off to the left side to Nottingham. He hurdles the right side, and it's going to be very close. He has stopped after maybe a yard. The tackle by Bonacati. There's a look from here as if they made it. They did. Dolphins hold and take over on their eight-yard line. What a uh, defensive uh, structure that was. On offense, the dynamic young Dolphins had the precision passing of Bob Greasy and the ballet-like moves of Paul Warfield working for them. Second down and five. Dolphins from our 25-yard line. Greasy, play action, fakes the handoff, drops the throw, firing deep downfield for Warfield. He's got it, 25, down to 25, 20. He's got to go to the distance, down to five. Touchdown, Dolphins. That gave Miami a quick seven-point lead. But the game was still a tight-fisted, brawling battle when John Unitas threw a bomb for Eddie Hinton. The ball never did get to Hinton, but it resulted in one of the most picturesque, perfectly executed plays ever seen on a football field. Hinton splits off to the far side, Perkins to the near side, third and six. Coach ball at their 17, back to throw. Unitas sets up, he is firing deep. Downfield is Hinton, it is knocked away, intercepted by Dick Anderson, the 40, 45, 50, down to the 40-yard line, cuts back to the near side, the 35, gets a block, 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, he's down to the 5, he scores! That spectacular play killed the Colts. It was like a bullet to the heart, and the Colts died instantly. Bob Greasy and Paul Warfield sealed the lid on the coffin with this play. Greasy back to throw. He fires deep. Warfield is down there. He's got it. 25. Looks for the hole. Far sideline. 15. Down to 10. He is out of bounds at the five-yard line. 
New Orleans, home of the Miami Dolphins. And the Sundance Kid performed the internment of the Colts on this play. Greasy with Tick and Zonka, foot backs behind him, spins, hands to Zonk, he threw, touchdown, Dolphins! 21 to nothing, the magnificent Miami Dolphins were champions of the AFC. Never before in football history had an expansion team come so far, so fast. The six-year-old Dolphins were in the big one, the Super Bowl. Only two short years ago, they had the worst record of any team in the AFL, and now they were only one step away from the lofty pinnacle of success. The Super Bowl had taken on such tremendous prestige that each game was now identified with Roman numerals, just like World Wars. This was Super Bowl VI, and the Dolphins were about to take on the Cowboys of Dallas. Pressure was the key to this game, everyone insisted. Dallas had been here before, losing last year in the final frustrating seconds. They knew what it was like. But the Dolphins had been to Kansas City. That was pressure with a capital P. Speculation and debate continued till kickoff time. Then there was nothing to do but play football. We're ready to go. The crescendo builds from the crowd. The white handkerchiefs being waved. Here's Clark forward. Gets the toe into it. It's high. It's not too deep. Morris will grab it at the six. Straight ahead of the 10. 15 to the 20. Breaks for the far side. Shakes off a tackle and is knocked down at the 25, the 26 yard line. Mercury Morris with a 20 yard return and the tackle made by Cliff Harris. In the opening minutes, Miami's precision zone pass protection and swarming pass rush had Roger Staubach stymied. Staubach up under center, first down from their 34-yard line. Drops straight back to throw, sets up. He is being rushed, Fernandez got him, lands the throw loss, back at the 28-yard line. Staubach dropping straight back to throw, sets up, being rushed again. He scrambles, he is dropped at the 33, 34-yard line by Jim Riley. Staubach, play action, fakes the handoff, back to throw. Being rushed, gets away again, stumbles. Still being pursued, and he is really rapid tack back at the 37-yard line. Jim Riley and Bob Hines in this Dolphin defense has been magnificent so far. Then the Dolphins began to mount a drive. On the Miami 42, Greasy called on Zonka to sweep right. Here's the handoff. Zonka's first carry. Sweep to the right behind Little. Finds a hole. 45, 50. Dragon tacklers with him down to the 46 yard line. Big Zonk rambles for the first first down of the ball game. On the next play, Greasy called for Zonka again. Then an incredible thing happened. Zonka, who had gained over a thousand yards during the year without fumbling one, finally did. First down. Dolphins at the Cowboy 46. Our first penetration of the afternoon. 20 splits to the far side. Warfield on the near side. The backs are in an eye behind Greasy, waiting for the snap from center. Long count at the line of scrimmage. Here's Grease, hand off on the trap. A fumble! Who's got it? Cowboys at their 48 yard line. Howley's recovery stopped what looked to be a sure scoring drive and gave momentum to the Cowboy offense. Dallas marched downfield but couldn't crack the Dolphins' goal line defense. All right, Starbuck sets his ball club. Third down and goal from the two. He fakes the handoff, swings a pass out at the five. It is caught by Thomas. Is he going to get in? No, he is stopped at the two-yard line. So it brings up a fourth down at the two-yard line, and the field goal team comes in. Mike Clark will try it. Snap set down, the kick is up, and it's good. The Cowboys had drawn first blood. The Dolphins were wounded but continued the fight. Dallas was cutting off their offensive strength and picking away at their defense. Then, with only one minute, 15 seconds remaining in the half, Dallas scored again. First and goal for seven. Staubach set. Fires. It is caught. Touchdown. Lance Allward. He got just inside the flag. They got inside Curtis Johnson down here in the corner. He got just inside the flag as they slanted on a flag pattern to the near corner. Down at the northwest corner, and Allward got inside and across the goal line on Johnson as Stavak hit him with a strike, and the Cowboys now move out to a 9 to nothing lead with a minute and 15 seconds left to go in this first half. The Dolphins fought desperately to get on the scoreboard before halftime and finally succeeded. The Dolphins have not been able to do anything offensively against this doomsday defense on the snap. Reese back to throw. Sets up, has time, fires the middle. It is caught by Tully. 40 up across the 45 and down at the 48-yard line. First and five, Greasy back to throw, sets, 
fires. It is caught down to the 25 to the 24 yard line. So we're going to have to settle for a field goal as the Premian comes in, waiting for the snap with eight seconds to go in the half. Here it is, set down. The kick is up. He's got the distance and the height. It's perfect. The Premian gets this on the board with eight uh, four seconds to go before the end of the half, and the white handkerchiefs are very much in evidence here at the Sugar Bowl for the first time this afternoon. The first half ended with a score, Dallas 10, Miami 3. But for the Dolphins, the second half never really began. The Cowboys scored twice more and completely shut down the Miami offense in the final 30 minutes. As Super Bowl VI came to an end, Dallas walked away with the prize that had avoided them for years, and Miami's dream was crushed. But even the gloom of Super Sunday couldn't overshadow the glories and the triumphs of the season past. During the incredible campaign of 71, this young, talented team proved to the football world that they are a team to be reckoned with for years to come. Although the record book will show that Dallas won the Super Bowl and Miami was number two, you couldn't tell that to any of the thousands of cheering fans who greeted the Dolphins at the Miami airport on the day after. I want you to hear a word from our uh, managing general partner, Joe Robbie, and then we'll talk to Don Shula and, and our ball club. Joe? Ladies and gentlemen, we have come a long ways together in a short time. We still have a ways to travel. Yesterday's a part of the glorious past of the Miami Dolphins, but tonight and tomorrow are on the path to Super Bowl number seven. All right, here's the coach of the year, Don Shula. Thank you. You'll never know how much this reception means to myself, my family, our football players, and their families. The things that, that I'll remember the most are the, uh, the great win that our football players had against Kansas City. And then the next week, here in Miami, that great pressure victory where we played almost perfect football against the Baltimore Colts in the American Football Conference Championship. And I can assure you with the tremendous fan support that we've had here in Miami, it just makes us so proud to represent the city of Miami with the Miami Dolphins football team. Thank you for your wonderful support. Thank you so much. Nick Bonacani. The only reason you really uh, see me smiling up here is because I'm just great to be back home, and thank God for that. Gero, your premier. Next year, we're going to go out there and win more games, and we'll be more determined, and we'll bring the trophy back to Miami where it belongs. Thank you. Jeff Keck. You are definitely the best fans in the world. Howard Twilley. Thank you very much. I'd just like to say that we're real happy to be back in Miami and we really appreciate your support, not only right now but all through the year. It's been a great season, and of course, we're real disappointed that it couldn't have been just a little bit better. 